Hello there, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Humanities 112. This is Dr. Kern again, and I thought I'd take a moment to give you some insights and some advice on how to do uh, Assignment 1. And really what we're looking for in Assignment 1 is about a three to four paragraph essay. Now, that's not a really long essay. Uh, if it says three to four paragraphs, I would strongly lean more towards the four than the three. And uh, in order to do this, you're asked to pick one of three topics, and there's three topics listed in the course guide, which you can take a look at. They include uh, Rene Descartes' Discourse on Method, Jonathan Swift's A Modest Proposal, and two uh, reading selections from Voltaire's Candide. Uh, so pick one of those, that's fine, uh, any of those will do. And basically you're asked to uh, write a short essay about the surprise ending of each. Uh, really what we're looking for, again, pay very close, when you write any of these essays, things you want to be very careful of is uh, to make sure you do exactly what the assignment asks in order to get the requisite amount of points. For example, in the first assignment, uh, there is a four segment rubric, which is how I have to grade the essays, okay? So you really want to take that into account uh, when you write your essay. So, like if I were doing this, uh, there's four things you get graded on. Clearly state the surprise ending, evaluate the author's success of providing an ending, references, and clarity. Okay, uh, I would put headings for the first two. The author's surprise ending. And then I'd talk about it and I'd write about it. Then I'd write my evaluation of the author's success at proving the surprise ending. And then I'd write about that. Okay, That makes it real easy for the grader to say, aha, they did what's in section one, they did what's in section two. Okay. Um, it also says you do need references for this. Now, according to the rubric here, it says you do need to have at least one or two references, probably two to three references would be ideal. Now, certainly one of the references is going to be the source from which you get the uh, information. And there's a couple of websites that are listed. So they need to be, hmm, excuse me, that's fine coffee. Um, they need to be uh, listed at the end of your paper in proper APA formatting. APA formatting does not mean simply listing the website. Now, depending on how you access uh, some of this information, there are a number of sources on the internet. Uh, one is called sonofcitationmachine.com. If you go to sonofcitationmachine.com and type in all the requisite information, it will format it for you in APA format. Okay, So if you're not real good at that, that's a good tool to use, so feel free to use that. But a good citation at the end should include the author. You should have authors for these, Descartes, Swift, or, or Voltaire. Um, you should have a short title and then uh, the website if that's where you draw it from. So please make sure you have a, um, a citation. I'm not asking for in-text citations on this one because it's very clear that you're going to draw from that source. And really for this one, you should primar only draw primarily from that primary source. You don't need to research, you know, what did, you, what did everyone else say about Jonathan Swift's modest proposal? I'm not interested in what other people said about Jonathan Swift this time. I'm very interested in what you say about it. So read it, read the passage, and then, like I said, summarize uh, the surprise ending, which you're supposed to do. Clearly state the surprise ending and, you know, how it comes about, blah, 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 which would be fine. And then tell me whether or not you think the author did a good job of proving their ending, uh, and that should suffice. So you should have one paragraph at least uh, outlining what the surprise ending is, another paragraph or two probably on whether or not you thought they did. So pro probably on maybe maybe two paragraphs to explain it and two paragraphs to evaluate uh, whether or not you thought they, they proved their case. That would give you four solid paragraphs. Um, then at the end, you'll have at least one, probably two citations, um, and that would be a good job on this particular essay. Okay, uh, This one's nice and short, pretty straight to the point. Um, feel free, again, if you're struggling with any of these writing assignments, uh, always feel free to call me if you need help. Um, I provided my phone number early on in the course, uh, so and you have access to it in the course shell. Uh, so please feel free to call me if you need some advice on what to write, how to write, APA formatting, or things like that. Because, uh, again, Strayer uses APA formatting. I kind of harp on this a lot during the course. Uh, but it's a good idea to get used to that as soon as possible, because the university uses that as its exclusive uh, mechanism 
for uh, citation. So the sooner you get comfortable with this um, and, and putting things in proper APA format, it'll make it much easier in your English classes and any other classes that have writing assignments, which is almost every class here. Okay. So um, again, feel free to call if you need any advice on that. Um, other than that, typed, double spaced, uh, please use only Microsoft Word. Uh, not works, not anything like that, because uh, I won't be able to open the file. Microsoft Word, and then attach the file. What some students tend to do is they copy the document and paste it in the comment section. Do not do that. I need a Word document attached to the assignment. Okay, so if you do not know how to attach an assignment, uh, there is a little video in the course shell that shows you how to attach a file. That's what you need to do. So write it in Microsoft Word, proofread it, uh, then attach it. Okay, do not copy it and paste it into the course shell. Uh, the other piece of advice I will offer for people, since this is kind of the first writing assignment of the term, is this. Please do not wait until Sunday evening to do this. Uh, one of the problems is if you, if you wait until the very end and figure, oh, this is, oh, it's only three paragraphs, three to four paragraphs. How hard can that be? Well, sometimes it's pretty hard because you've got to read Descartes, Swift, or Voltaire, who are widely regarded as three of the most complex writers of this period. So it's unlikely this is going to be something you're going to be able just to read. Uh, to do a good job in this, honestly, you have to read it, you have to think about it, then you have to read it again. And in doing that, the subtlety, the nuance, and the complexity of what each of these very important writers are saying sometimes usually shines through a little bit more. So that's my recommended methodology for attacking this particular assignment. So the earlier in the week you start on it, uh, the more likely you are to be uh, more successful at it. So anyway, that's how uh, I would attack assignment one. Um, again, pay extra close attention to the assignment sheet and to the rubric. And when you're done, read the rubric and say, did I do these four things, because that is what I'm going to be evaluating the essays on. Uh, so that's a good uh, way to do that. If you have any questions, as I said, give me a call. I look forward to reading your essays. Um, so please, as I said, best of luck with the assignment. I hope you enjoy it, and I look forward to reading them. Thanks again for uh, watching my video. Bye-bye.